The Irish Safety Net is two months old now, and it is time to taste it, see if it's on track, see if the recipe is performing as intended. That's coming up. How's it going, Chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse, and this is Still It, and that is the Irish Safety Net whiskey that we made a little while ago. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can check the video out up over here. Not a bad idea to do that first, uh, and then come back and watch this video. But the long and short of it is basically uh, we made a super simple all-grain recipe that was augmented with sugar. The idea is that it is a next step. If you're thinking of getting into all-grain distilling, but you don't know if you really want to just, you know, go full raw and jump straight into it, you can do this kind of recipe. I've got a few of them out now, uh, and the idea is that it... it just gives you a giant safety net. If you completely screw up the all grain part of things, that's fine, because the sugar's got you back and you're still gonna be flavoring it with the grains. You get the idea. I don't have too much to say other than all the stuff in the intro is as much of a mystery to me as it is to you because I've been lazy and I don't know if I've tasted this once <laughs> since I put it in these bottles. Kind of slack of me, but uh, it is what it is. Oh, and by the way, I do have some Jameson here to uh, side by side it with. Let's put a glass over there so I don't get confused. Obviously the intent of this recipe, of this whiskey, was to aim a little bit more to the pot still side of things rather than the Jameson's. This is what I got. It's the closest thing I've got to compare it to, so it's here. Oh no, I've lost a clip. It's okay, we have the technology. We don't have the technology. Help. This needs to be facing that way, and that's on top. Hey! <laughs> Dear Lord. <laughs> so useless. You know what, let's just pour this uh, right now, and I'm going to try this first, because I, I kind of know Jameson's fairly well, uh, and I haven't had a whiskey in, like, over a week, actually, so I need to, to recalibrate. So the idea here, team, is I've got a larger volume with less wood, both, you know, ratio-wise, but there is actually less wood in this bottle than this bottle. Uh, and the idea is that this one I want to keep for a longer period of time, at least six months, probably a year. Uh, this one I'm aiming to have ready at about the three-month, maybe four-month mark. That's why it's got a higher ratio of uh, wood to alcohol. Right, so right up front, unfortunately, there is a little bit of sugar action going in on this. Yeah, it has that sugar bowl thing going on. It's a little bit harsh and jaggy on the back end. Um, yeah, there's no two ways around it. That's just the way it is. Uh, but, like I said, I am hoping to age this for a longer period of time. So that hopefully will improve, you know, as we get more influence from the wood. Keep in mind too, guys, that this was secondhand oak in both of them in kind of keeping with the thematic style. So once again, I'm expecting it to take a little bit longer to start doing its thing. Anyway, let's try the one that's had more wood on it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, okay, so this one's come a lot further in that time. Presence in the mouth is better, the finish is better as well. Still has a little bit of that sugar. I mean, it is just a product that's been made with a lot of sugar, right? It's the way it is. Both of them have a lovely soft grainy flavor, which I really dig. Uh, both of them have that sort of uh, slickness to them, the, the roundness, the fullness. Um, I guess I would have to attribute that to the unmalted barley and the oats that we put into these. Neither of them have the, the kind of honeyed, syrupy sort of sweetness that a lot of Irish whiskies have. Uh, neither of them have the green apple and they only have a small amount of that um, kind of shortbread cookie thing going on. Now, all of those things are things that I am assuming are going to show up with more time. Uh, I've had each of those flavors show up in whiskies, you know, different whiskies, not obviously an Irish whiskey like this. Uh, and each of those flavors just kind of appeared out of nowhere after a decent amount of time, you know, interacting with oak. If you've had experiences with these flavors, either just straight out of the gate or showing up over time, I would love to hear your thoughts on it. I really and truly would. Drop them in the comments down below. Because like I say, I haven't had a, a huge amount of experience with this. I have, however, had plenty of experience with today's sponsor, Manscaped. 
Manscaped offer a full range of kick-ass men's grooming products and you can get the full experience with the Performance Package 4.0. All of the tools to look after your... Uh... And in this little kit, you're going to get the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, which uh, I use a whole lot because I am, as you can tell, a freaking Yeti. The, where is it? Uh, ball Toner and the ball deodorant. Uh, boxes or briefs or whatever you want to call them, I don't know, it's up to you, but I've got three or four pairs of these things now, I think, and they're absolutely awesome. I'm not going to show them to you because I'm, uh, I'm wearing them <laughs> right now. And of course, the star of the show, the Lawnmower 4.0. This thing comes with a detachable, replaceable ceramic blades, which are really freaking cool. A little LED for, uh, you know, trimming in all situations. The whole thing is waterproof, which is wonderful for cleanup and ease of use in whatever situation, once again, you want to use it in. And the thing charges wirelessly. How freaking cool is that? Oh, and by the way, you get this, uh, this sweet little bag as well. So, if you would like to pick up a Performance Package 4.0 as well, you can go to manscaped.com and use the code STILLIT to get 20% off and free international shipping on your own Performance Package. That is the code STILLIT at manscaped.com. The color on both of them right now is very, very light. I, I mean, I'm guessing you probably can't even see anything from the camera back there. Uh, I have no problem with that. They will pick up over time here. Oh, shit. What is wrong with me tonight? I am out of practice, man. I'm trying to kill my lights. Dear Lord. There we go. Can you see a little bit of color coming through there? It's a, it's a very light sort of straw gold. Uh, I'm hoping after time it'll show up to be, you know, something similar to this. Very much on the gold amber side, not the deep brown amber that you get with the uh, new oak. That's what I'm hoping to happen over here. You know what? Uh, actually, guys, let's go back to the original video and have a look at some of the uh, more popular questions and comments that popped up on that thing and uh, I can address them directly. Texas Soul says he never misses a video, he loves the idea of focusing on recipes and the assistants are adorable. Uh, much love from the great state of Texas. Yeah man, uh, <laughs> those assistants are growing up fast, it's kind of freaky actually and I wish I could have been in Texas for the Bastards Ball that uh, has just passed but there's always next year man, there's always next year. Maybe I'll see you there. From Eddie, I don't know how to say your last name, mate. Sorry, I apologize. <laughs> Adore the series. Would love to see another in the series on fruit brandy schnapps in the same style. Um, I'd thought about that, mate. I thought about doing fruit in the same sort of way, but in some ways it, it almost doesn't fit the next step idea because um, that's just the way that most people do fruit brandies, unless you're just doing no sugar whatsoever. Uh, like uh, Beta just did one with no sugar at all. Uh, I hear what you're saying. I'm, I'm thinking on it. I'm not quite sure how to put my own spin on it, I guess is what I'm saying. Anyway, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Vlaga Vullen. Awesome name, dude. Uh, hey Jesse, I'd probably toast the unfermented stuff in the oven to make it even more choco biscuit-ish. Uh, I hear you, man. I hear you. I really do. Um, I guess it's just that the damn it flies get out of there. I guess the thing with the Irish style is that the Irish style is driven by the unmalted barley. That's sort of its point of difference, I guess. So I guess we could mess around if I was going to do this again. And after tasting this, I think you probably have a good point. I hear you. I could definitely cram more flavor into the uh, the wash like we did in the uh, the Munich one to make it you know taste more finished earlier. But I think we'd have to do that with stuff that isn't that high portion of unmalted barley. That's just that's just my gut feel if you want something that's going to taste Irishy. Chef Darling. Ooh, I can't wait to try this. I loved the last batch. Um, I'm assuming that means you did one of the other safety nets. That makes me very happy. It makes me happy when uh, I put a bit of effort in and someone else picks it up and runs with it. So awesome. I'm glad you enjoyed it, my man. Heart Pumper has got kind of a long comment, uh, so I won't go into it all, but the gist of it is to make life easier for those who are sparging, add some rice hulls. 100% dude, that's an awesome uh, tip. Mostly I think if you're going to be using traditional, you know, three vessel type setups where you, where the grain stays still and the liquid passes through it with a false bottom. When you're using the bags and stuff, you have the ability to just 
yank it and squeeze it. So a stuck spide isn't so much of a, a big deal. But if you're going to adapt the technique to uh, you know a false bottom, 100%. Rice holes are awesome. DJ Russell 89, love the video, and I'd love to see a video on Bourbon or the Lincoln County process. 100% dude, I do need to do one of those. Uh, something corn based and sort of traditionally similar to Bourbon is definitely gonna be on the cards for the Safety Net series. In the meantime, that isn't happening just yet. I do have something in the mix, which is uh, sitting in a big old fermenter over there. It involves corn and it involves this barrel. Finally, <laughs> keep your eyes open for that one, guys. All right, so I've stored long enough and I've had time to figure out what I'm gonna be doing with these barrels in terms of uh, you know aging into the future. But before I tell you that, I need to say a huge, huge thank you to the Patreons. Thank you so much, Patreons. You're the reason that I get to do stuff like this. So thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. All right, guys, this is gonna be a little bit boring, uh, but I think sometimes the best course of action is to do nothing at all. And in this instance, I'm going to give these things a little bit of a shake to get a little bit more O2 into them. Uh, and I'm gonna put them back into the shelf. Simple as that. Now, I was planning on, you know, hoping to have this guy here ready at three months. After tasting this, I, I just don't think that's gonna be happening. So I'm gonna put it on the calendar to taste this again in another two. I'm gonna go out and say that this is not as sort of standout successful as the other safety net version we did with the Munich malt simply because it's it's kind of doing what I would expect the whiskey to do it's not doing anything crazy and out there it's just ticking along and it's going to need some time that's the way it is so I guess I'll catch up with you guys again on this topic in a couple of months <laughs> if you enjoyed the video guys give it a thumbs up if you have something to say about this process or especially those flavors like I was talking about the ones that haven't shown up yet that I want to show up Hit me in the comment section down below and, and keep on chasing the craft guys. See ya.